Well, hello. It's a honor to meet you, especially after just playing through uh, Sonic Frontiers, uh, both myself as well as Dave behind the camera. I think like the big questions on everyone's mind is like, so what inspired this idea to take Sonic to such a large open world? Like traditionally, Sonic is very like either 2D levels or if it is 3D, it's a bit more linear in scope. So this feels like a pretty big departure for a Sonic game. So yeah, as you did mention, there's uh, in Sonic's history, we've had the 2D side-scrolling gameplay, we've had the 3D more linear format, where you have Sonic starting someplace and going to a goal, kind of on a track. Uh, this is going to be kind of the next iteration. This is like the future of Sonic, is we wanted to make something that really em embraced freedom and the freedom to kind of run around wherever you want. Uh, and, and that's what they did with this huge 3D environment, is taking that Sonic platform action into this new 3D environment, the iteration that went into it, the passion that went into it, this is the open zone format that they've created. Sonic has a bit more moves in this game than he does uh, in the past, and so I was wondering, like, early on, like, most of the enemies I encountered, I'm like, oh, I can use my homing attack and kind of mm -hmm. take them out in one hit, very traditional Sonic. But uh, does combat become a bit uh, more central, more focused, like later on in the game? Does that like play a larger role in the environment in the game that you're going to be doing? So yeah, in this open zone format, we also we have a lot of platforming that people can enjoy the uh, 3D action platforming. We also have the battle as one of the elements that people can enjoy in the open zone format. And really, we wanted to make sure we're allowing the player, we're giving the player choice so they can choose to, if they just want to do action platforming, if they run into an enemy that they don't want to fight, they can also just run away and they don't have to engage. But if you're into battle and you want to do battle, you can also engage that enemy, defeat that enemy, and then go find new enemies to do battle with. So it's really this uh, encouraging people to choose what they want to do and giving them the freedom to go and do what they want to do. Uh, but if you do want to engage enemies in battle, we also found, you know, we need a battle system to allow people to engage in the enemies and allow people to kind of figure out how they want to defeat the enemies and how they want to have a fun time with the battle system. Awesome. And going off of this, this choice of whether or not you want to run a platform or fight, like there, there are like these roadblocks like in the world where it's like, oh, you need this amount of keys or gears to like get past this certain thing. Could someone theoretically like get through the entire game like just doing the combat stuff if they wanted to or just doing the platforming if they wanted to or were you going to have to get like a healthy mixture at some point? <laughs> <laughs> so the game design is kind of built with the idea that most people are going to want to do both. They will want to do some platform actioning, they will want to do some battle. Uh, so it is constructed in that way, but it is also flexible enough to allow people if they want to just like, I don't want to do a lot of battle, they can find different ways of getting all the items that they need to get to continue on with the game without engaging in too much battle. And the same with platform action. If they don't want to do too much platform action, there are other ways in the game to collect items that you need to get you to that next uh, stage uh, in order to com continue forward with the game. Awesome. And just to clear off everything with the combat, I did notice that there were a ways to upgrade like Sonic's attack power and defense, things that haven't really existed in a Sonic game before. So how exactly does that work? Because in previous games, it's like, oh, Sonic gets hit, he loses his rings, you have to collect it again. So what happens if you upgrade your defense in this game? So because battle is one of the three key pillars of the game, we want to make sure uh, if you're having problems with battle, maybe you're not, you're getting hit and taking too much damage, or your damage, you, when you're hitting the enemies, you're not damaging them enough. We want to allow people to kind of upgrade Sonic and change the uh, like parameters of offense and defense and ways of engaging in the battle so it's more suited to your style of doing battle. Um, that, that is part of you know making sure the battle system is fun and is something that people can enjoy and experience at the levels or at the skill set and techniques that they have. But we also want to make it easier Maybe if you're not good at battles in general, other ways of kind of improving Sonic and allowing you to maybe get somewhere that you couldn't get to do before, get the items that you need to get in order to progress. So it's not just 
you have to battle and here's the ways to battle. The demo that Dave and I played, it gave a very good idea of like what the gameplay for this is going to be like, but what about narrative? What does transforming this game into such this large open world does for a narrative? Because Sonic's not just, oh, going through a level and then having a chance to talk to Tails and Knuckles and Amy for like a cutscene before going on to the next mission. Like, so how does the narrative change or evolve for a game like this? Hi. Uh, so yeah, uh, we did put a lot of focus on the story and the story presentation. In previous Sonic titles, it was kind of like Eggman does something bad. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. We got to go to stop Eggman because he's doing this thing. And it, it's very like directly presented to you. Uh, that's kind of the previous way that Sonic title storytelling kind of took place. And we're changing that format. And we're now putting Sonic on this mysterious island. Who's on this island? What are the, even the enemies? Are these enemies? I don't know. What am I supposed to do here? How do I save my friend? Like, these are all the, the mysteries and the questions that we're presenting people that we want them to go out and kind of explore and learn about and have this experience and figure out in the storytelling. Like, we have mysteries. We don't know what's going on. Sonic doesn't know what's going on either. You have to go out and figure this out. Uh, and it's this different style of storytelling that we that is going to be new. I would say even even though with this like uh, underlying mystery that's going on, like it, it, is it still funny? Like Sonic as a franchise is pretty usually comical in nature. <laughs> so yeah, if we were to talk about the storytelling for Sonic Frontiers, it's probably not so much comical and probably more mysterious. And I know we have had a lot of comical games in the past, but the, the mystery is really where they're going for Frontiers. Uh, that being said, we have employed Ian Flynn, who is a comic book writer, to write a lot of the dialogue for this game. Uh, and Ian Flynn, you know, is great at that sonic voice, and he's done a great job of writing dialogue that still feels very much like, you know, a, a kind of a cynical or a kind of snarky comment, uh, comment that Sonic would say, uh, that's definitely in there. So even though the presentation is mysterious, it is still very true to like what a Sonic fan would enjoy and what Sonic fans like about Sonic. Mm -hmm. And uh, to continue on for the story, like how, how much of it is new? Like playing a Sonic, obviously, and we did see a cutscene that had Eggman in it, but and then there was a mention of Amy via one of the items. Uh, is that it? Are there new characters for Sonic to meet and interact with? Uh, do we get to see any of the like the OG cast like making their return in this game? <laughs> so I can't say too much about the story. Again, it, it's mysterious. We don't want to spoil it for you guys. Um, so we don't want to talk too much about that, but we're on a mysterious island. There's going to be mysterious characters, mysterious enemies. Uh, who they are, what are they doing there, what's the end goal, what's Sonic supposed to do about all of this? Those are the things that we want to present to people so they can really enjoy the story and start learning more about all these characters and enemies and what's going on. While you're doing this and trying to figure out what's going on, there's these like smaller mysteries, these puzzles like throughout the world that you have to solve. And Dave and I like putting our heads together, solved like the ones in the beginning of the game pretty like easily, but uh, we were wondering like, like how how complex do like these puzzles get? Like, are there any like true like uh, brain scratchers in there that are gonna take fans like a while to like figure out? <laughs> we really wanted to make sure there are other fun things to do while on the island. So yes, platforming platform actioning is fun, but while you're on the island, there's also these puzzles to do. So for people who want to do that and choose to do that and have a fun time, that's a great way that they can earn rewards and kind of do things on the island that they are having a fun time with. So we do have puzzles on the island for players to engage with and have fun with, uh, but we also don't want to force people to do anything. So if you don't want to do puzzles, you don't have to do puzzles. You can still find other ways of having fun on the island in that open zone and still progressing in the game and progressing the story. To wrap things up, my, my co-workers would hate me if I didn't ask this question, but this is Sonic. Sonic's got to go fast. It, has anyone in the office like tested to see like how long it takes for Sonic to like run from one side of the map like all the way to the other? Like, can can you do it like really quickly? So <laughs> do This is actually a gr really great thing that they were testing in development when they started making this game. Everyone was running from start to finish. You know, how quickly can you clear the island uh, from one you know side to the other? 
they were constantly testing it because Sonic is such a fast character. When we're building this open zone area, if you're going through it too quick, like that, that doesn't work for the open zone format. So they're, you know, they're like, they'd make the island, they'd run across it. They're like, this is no good, throw it out. We got to make it bigger. We got to make it bigger, even bigger. And they're constantly testing the size of the island and constantly questioning themselves because they have such a fast character and they need to make the open zone format a fun playground to play in. Uh, that was always what development was, you know, iterating on and making sure is the island too big? Is, it's really not big enough is what they kept figuring out. Uh, and they had to keep expanding so they could make that open zone format. Well, awesome. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today and answer all of my questions. Uh, yeah, uh, for all of you watching at home, uh, keep it here at GameSpot. We got plenty more content for Summer Game Fest on the horizon. Talk to you later.